nation coming to us. We give you praise, Father, for your resources and your provision for our destiny. We're not satisfied with where we're at. We want to do much more, much more, much more. So we thank you. You're the God of much more. And we just put you in remembrance of your riches and glory. And we receive as we sow this seed today into your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. brief and to the point. When Pastor Steve was with us in, uh, wherever we were, Mellis or England somewhere, it, no, we were in London, <clears throat> he said he saw me flying like an eagle and swooping down and getting the prey. And he said he saw Rod like a lion. So I want you to, I've been thinking, I actually taught the church on eagles. <laughs> You can laugh, but you're a good seer. I don't. I know you boys love each other. I'm okay with all that now. Don't even worry about it. Listen to this in Isaiah 40, 31. Maybe you can put the Amplified up there. But <clears throat> I was reading the message before I fell asleep last night. It says God. This is the Message Bible. Isaiah 40, 31. God energizes those who get tired. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> gives fresh strength to dropouts, for even young people tire and drop out. Young folk in their prime stumble and fall. But those who wait upon God get fresh strength. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk and they don't lag behind. Now listen to it in the Amplified. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, who look for, and who hope in him. I just think about everything you've been facing in the last week, or the current trial you're in. Just think about it, and just think about what it means when you hope in God. Hope in him. You'll be changed, shall change and renew their strength and power. They shall lift up their wings. They shall mount up close to God as eagles mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. I like that. I love your word, Father. I love you. We thank you. Our hope is in you. And we're going to rise up. We're just going to rise up, Father. We're just going to rise way up high. Way up. Come on, way up. Ooh, way up. Might be a bit chilly up there, but just get up there. Maybe you've never been up there before, but just go anyway. And trust and hope in God for a new anointing, for new strength. Mm. Much more new strength. Strength that changes you. Strength where you've been defeated and thought, oh my God, I just can't go on with this. We just gather up those words and we say we have fresh strength to change. We thank you. To change. But in fact, we renew our strength and power. Yeah. We're going to run and not be weary. We're going to run and not be weary. Run and not be weary. You maybe never seen yourself running. But you're going to run and not be weary. So we release that eagle anointing, yeah? Come on, we release it. Just... Fly a bit higher. Go a bit higher. Go a bit further up. Like, maybe you've just kind of gone like that and your prayers hit the ceiling. Well, never mind all those prayers. We just gather them up and we pour forth some prayers for the future. Amen? And um, we just let the Lord deal with us. You know, he's dealing with all of us. Whoosh. Oh, Spain. Whoosh. Yes. Remember, Rod and I were in Spain, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. I love your prompts. <laughs> And, and uh, this is a good little story. And uh, he said, should we go and look at an eagle? You know, my husband loves to experience life. That's his core value. Mine is honoring heaven. His is experiencing life. And he does. He loves it. When we were just in Cyprus, he got a really fast boat and just flat out. And I was like, uh, you might want to slow down a bit. I mean, boom, boom, boom over the waves. And here's some other guy coming in a boat. And the weight we're making was huge, you know. 
He's like, why do I need to slow down? He's like, no, I'm having a good time. I mean, he doesn't swim. And he didn't grow up on a boat like I did. And so I had the fearful thoughts that anything could happen. But anyway, never mind that, because he likes to experience life, and I mustn't be afraid. <laughs> so we were in Spain, and we went to see we went to this eaglery. And these honking great things came out. I mean, they were literally this high. And they were on the edge of this hill. They were like turkey buzzards or something, he calls them. I can't remember what, whatever, what kind of eagles they were. Who cares? They were eagles. I didn't want to get that close, <laughs> you know, because you don't know what eagles can do if they just can get you. So the trainer came up behind them, and he stood behind them like this, going, whoosh, whoosh. And I thought, how ridiculous. What is he doing? He did it. He just kept doing it. And suddenly, one of the eagles kind of did this and flapped and took off and soared. And then he went up and up. And then the other one did the same thing. He got behind the other one, the two of them. They just went up so slowly. But you're like, my gosh, they went so high. You could hardly see them. And he, he then had a little microphone thing. And he said, oh, they'll go over to Morocco for their lunch, and then they'll come back. I've trained them. <laughs> you know, you need to let, if you've been put down on the ground, just get somebody to just do that behind yeah. you. <laughs> just, come on. <laughs> Whoosh. Go again. You know, because like, like you, we meet people, they made tons of money, then they lost it all. They were high in God, and they were on a roll, and they thought their life was going to be incredible, and then all of a sudden it wasn't. You know what? You just go again, whoosh, whoosh, you get some fresh strength. So we've been coming here to get some fresh strength. We've been moving into a new anointing. Now you have to kind of adjust to it, because those thoughts come that you're not going to make it, that maybe you spent 30 years on something, and it's just kind of bleh, looks like nothing, looks like a dead fire, not like, well, you know what, you just get another match. So whatever your life assignments are, because we're on an assignment here. Seriously, we're on an assignment. Just go get a box of matches. Like I say to Gosha, I need you to come up here for a minute. I say to Gosha, go get me matches. And I don't know, where's that guy who came to me? There's a brother here. There, you're there, okay. He's got something to tell you, Gosha. Gosha is a gift from God. <laughs> you are. She's a gift from God. Thank you. And come up, and, and, and he's got something prophetic he wants to do. And I think this is between our nations, too. She's actually from Poland. So not, not that that means anything. It just means Eastern Europe and London are together. I don't know if you know much about flags, but this is an actual specific warrior flag. Wait a sec. Let's get your mic. I don't know. I'm not going to touch it. No, too <laughs> Uh, within the flag waving part of uh, the services, there's specific flags for each pr purpose, and this is an actual warrior's flag. All right. And this was give, give, in, given to me, there was an impartation when this was given to me when my wife had cancer, and I warred over this with her and through prayer uh, and, you know, uh, just uh, prayer in tongues even and all. So I thank you for that, Lord. So this, this is a very powerful flag, and there's an impartion that came with it. And during this whole conference, uh, every time Gosha would go by, it stirred my spirit. There was just something, and I couldn't, I just uh, didn't know what was stirring me. And in the few times I talked with her, uh, helping over in the resource center, I just got little bits of information. Um, last night when I went home after helping Pastor Larry with the healing, I got home about 6.30 and just was so tired. And um, I put dinner in the oven and lay down on the couch and listened to a CD by Lucy and one by Leonard. Mm -hmm. And then um, yeah. I ate, and then I said, I really need to lie down again and just soak in and figure out what this conference was about. And so I put those two CDs on again, and naturally, at one point, I fell asleep, but I woke up at 1.30, and um, 
I let the dogs out for one last time before going up to bed. And as I walked to the back door in the living room to let them out, I saw my flag hanging there. And we have this just hanging out of the bookcase. And I said, now I understand. And it was a revelation to me. And then I went up to bed and I was up most of the night just thinking and praying. And because of the spirit that I've seen in Gosha and that she's given Amen. her will to the will of God, and I can see the love in her heart for Jesus. I'm, this, has been a, this has been a personal um, warrior flag to me for my personal reason, but I'm gonna pass this impartation that I receive to Gosha right now because God is um, raising up his chosen people right now, higher and higher. And so this flag that was personal to me is being lifted up higher. And this is going to be used to war against Satan. And it's going to bring down nations. And she's going to use it to bring down London and England, and then also her native Poland. And it's interesting that I'm a quarter of each one of those nations in oh, heritage. Good. So I pass this on to you. Why don't you just stretch your hands forth and pray? Yeah, I want to bless her. Father God, I, I pass the impartation that was given to me onto Gosha, that she wars with this flag against Satan's strongholds. Yeah. And Jesus. I ask that your warrior angels are continually surrounded her whenever she's using this flag. Mm -hmm. And as a man of God, even though I'm supposed to be turning childish, I will be her prayer covering whenever she goes out using this flag. Mm -hmm. And I ask Amen. Jesus to bless this Amen. in his name. It. Thank you. Yeah, you can. I, I woke up this morning, it was 3.33, and was Isaiah 33, 3 says, you know, call upon me and I will answer you and uh, show you every secret places that you don't know. And like what Chris gave this flag to me, but I think it's symbolic, like every one of us got a flag to inherit, really, and just open the doors that has been locked, and the Lord, Lord give us destiny for our own places, and we just, we're going to take it this time, all together, in Jesus' name. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. Thank you. Thank you. So that's exciting, you know. So you sometimes might look at people and think, well, it's okay for Rod or Pastor Steve or Julie or Leonard. You know, it's okay for them to rise up. But you know, it is for every one of us. And what I've been hearing, you know, and thank God for Lucy. I don't know where, I can't see if you're here now, but isn't Lucy's stuff great? It's just so good because she, it refreshes you because she spends time up there. I mean, only you know how much time you spend up there in the throne room. And you do whatever it takes to stay up there. It's not easy. I'm not saying this is an easy lifestyle, because sometimes you're flying and it's just you fly by the instruments. You have no idea what's ahead. But you know God. And um, I'm going to end my session in about 10, 15 minutes with just a clip that Rod showed me from the uh, Facebook. I'm not very good on all that stuff, and I'm not really that interested. I'm not really that bothered. But I do do it once in a while. But anyway, <clears throat> please do let us connect more with the internet and with the stuff that we're doing. Because there are political leaders who are rising up as eagles. Okay, so if political leaders who don't necessarily know God the way you know him, you have a revelation, you know. And, and I would say a good prayer would be, God, give me a revelation of who you are and bring me to the place I should be, because maybe you're not there. And I know that whenever I pray a prayer like that, God, this is the day that you made, and you, know, you start out with that basic stuff, and then you just kind of move on, and then you find yourself in significant meetings, significant places, you know, uh, and you can be concerned about it. But if you think of yourself as an eagle, which we all are, I mean, you know, we all have access to the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 
And he has a remarkable way of putting inside of you what he wants that's from heaven. So actually none of us can say, well, I'm not gifted to do that. Actually, that's not really true. If we have the Holy Spirit and we trust him and we have our hope in what the Holy Spirit can do and we all learn that, because isn't God messing with our identities? It's not, surely it's not just me. I mean, he's just so messing with my identity all the time. And then, you know, something comes up and triggers, and I think, oh, I'm jealous, or I'm not perfect in love in that area, or I'm cross, or I'm angry, and God just keeps going. And then you find a few months later, you're not actually able to be triggered the way you were a few months ago because you've let the Holy Spirit do a work. It's almost like, you know, there's part of me that says, well, God can do whatever he wants in me, but actually he does need your cooperation. He really does. And I've, and I've been, you know, this scripture has, from Isaiah 40, I'm going to read it again from the Amplified. Those who wait for the Lord, who expect, who look for, who hope in him. Okay, because it's been, you know, um, the guys who are from London, they know me in the church. God gives me a word on Sundays when we gather. God gives me a word for the month. We put out an email and you can go to our website and sign up for it if you want to, to encourage you. Because, you know, our family motto is above it all. <laughs> it's not easy to be above it all in London or anywhere. You have warfare here on a different level than we have over there. You're trying to wake up a whole nation. You know the best way to wake up a whole nation? It's probably just by doing what you know to do and just role modeling it. And people see Christ in you, the hope of glory. They see you walking. You just ask God, what do I do? Where do I go today? What, what do you want for me? And you just begin to step into it. And other people are like, crikey, how did that happen? Well, because you walked with God. Don't be afraid to walk with God. Don't be afraid to go higher in your worship. Don't be afraid to wait upon the Lord. Have hope in him. Father, we're sorry for the places we haven't had hope in you, that you're going to change this person's heart, or you're going to change this situation with financial lack and lack in some area. You're going to change something with our health. Father, we believe, we trust, we ask for our trials to be brought to an end and to come to a new place, a victory in the name of Jesus. You just keep praying on. You do not back up. You press in and you press on. And, and regardless of what it looks like, what it feels like, what isn't in your bank account, you just keep going because you are chosen. You know, you are. You're chosen. He loves you. This is part of who we are and what we are. And we are chosen for an assignment. We're here on assignment. Yes, it's fun to run over to the outlets and visit with everyone and do the things you do. But we are here on assignment. And you, as a church, have an assignment. And you're moving into it. We have an assignment. Okay, I don't know where you're at with your assignment. When I finish writing my book in, I don't know, January, February, March time, I hand it over to Jean, who helps with all our admin, for the prayer foundation, and oh, I said, okay, you know, and I lost word, word disappeared on Monday or the Tuesday when I thought, well, I'll just have another look through. Because you know when you're doing something for God, you want to get it right. You want to move in a spirit of excellence. You want to do your best to help what you're supposed to be doing. You don't want to be rebellious. You don't want to be independent. You don't want to be, well, I want to do this. You want to, you want to be working with God. I mean, I don't necessarily like some of the things he's changed in my life, but I've seen it help me. So maybe you just need to get somebody behind you to whoosh you. you know? Maybe you'll just remember this whoosh, whoosh. I don't want to do that again. I don't want to do it that way. You know, don't be like that. That's really the old person. That person's dead. Don't keep identifying with your old man. Just don't, you know. It just, there's no life there. You're an eagle. You're a lion. You're a warrior for God. You're God's chosen. You have an assignment to change nations. And you're out there watching and, and praying from your nation. And you know how important this is? It's crucially important. So 
Um, you know, as I've been doing this, I've been thanking God for the fresh hope and the freshness he's putting in all of us. Because I think the enemy thought he'd wearied us out. We'd come to a place where, you know, we couldn't go any further forward. But here this guy goes whoosh, whoosh, whoosh behind these eagles, and they just, they're like, okay. <laughs> Let the Holy Spirit give you a whoosh this morning. Huh? He can do it, Jason. He's got such a... You're not here by accident. You're not a worm. You're not a person to be laid low. You're not a person to live under defeat. All of our products and resources we have, it's all about victory. It's about rising up. There's tons of stuff from Rod here and, and others. And, you know, people think we just got to the place we are. We've had years of this. We've been over there 32 years. You know, now I'm not saying anything. I'm just, about us, I'm saying God just keeps encouraging us. And so we're building a bridge. So what do we need to build a bridge? I think we need a plane, you know. I, this isn't the first time I've prayed for a plane. I just never really knew where we were going to keep it or what we were going to do. You guys have got an airport down the road. Come on. Even nearer, probably. What do I know? You know? Get the plane, get the pilot, start praying into something bigger than you've been praying into. Maybe your kids are out on drugs or your, your relatives don't want to talk to you because they're just out there, you know, and they cannot understand how you do what you do. It doesn't matter. You know, God put a fresh hope in people who are about to collapse, people who are about to say, oh, it's just, that's what this conference is about. And, and I, I don't know if you did, but I was like, oh my gosh, hope. I don't know much about hope. I like things that are powerful. Because when I stood next to Jesus and the words came out of his mouth like a two-edged sword, oh, I like the power of God. I like it showing up. It can show up in the kitchen. I actually like it showing up where I need it. But he needs it in the church. He needs a powerful church. The church needs not to be collapsing right now. Whoa, come on. The church needs to wake up. The church needs to stand up, rise up, declare, become stronger, be more than it's ever been, not be concerned about the wealth mountain, the health mountain, any mountain. Just go from one to another like an eagle. Just soar over them. You drop a blessing wherever you go. And if the reaction is horrible, never mind, drop another one. <laughs> because when we come into eternity for real and we step out into the realm of the Spirit, you know what? The only thing that will matter is that you walk with Christ. You are like an eagle. Those who wait for the Lord, who expect, who look for, who hope in him, never, ever, ever lose your hope. Never. Don't lose it. Just be a person who does bubble up all the time with hope. I'm hopeful. It's going to be a better day today than it was yesterday. Tomorrow's going to be a better time, a better day. Sometimes we don't know how we're going to get everything done, but somehow it all dovetails together. And we walk with God. God's phenomenal. And he is mobilizing prayer around the nation. So I would like the guys in the back, we gave them a video clip of President, Prime Minister Netanyahu from Israel, who came and stood in the United Nations. And, and you hear it. The anointing of God is so strong. We think, oh, the anointing is on this person or that person. You know, it's whoever will move in God's will, thought, and purpose they will be anointed. They will be increased. Come on. So can we show that video? Home to over 6 million Jews. He pledged, quote, there will be no Israel in 25 years. End quote. Seventy years after the murder of six million Jews, 
Iran's rulers promise to destroy my country, murder my people, and the response from this body, the response from nearly every one of the governments represented here has been absolutely nothing, utter silence, deafening silence. Perhaps you can understand why Israel is not joining you in celebrating this deal. If Iran's rulers were working to destroy your country, perhaps you'd be less enthusiastic about the deal. If Iran's terror proxies were firing thousands of rockets at your cities, perhaps you'd be more measured in your praise. And if this deal were unleashing a nuclear arms race in your neighborhood, perhaps you'd be more reluctant to celebrate. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, who look for, who hope in him, shall change shall renew their strength and power. They shall lift up their wings. They shall mount up close to God as the eagles mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. You know, eagles can mount up into the face of the light of the sun because their eyes are so strong and weaker birds can't go up there after them. You have to get free from distractions. You have to get free from things to, 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 to move on and to rise up into your assignment. Each one of you has an assignment. When I finish my book after all those months and hands it to Jean in the kitchen to go upstairs and print it out, I heard suddenly everything change in the kitchen. I was like, what's happening? And there was just a wide open connection to the throne room. And I heard, she's finished the book, she's finished the book, she's finished, she's finished the book, she's finished the book, she's finished. I was like, my God, I heard heaven singing. And I was like, oh, this is incredible. Why, why is heaven singing? Didn't it know I was going to get to the end when I'd written it 10 different ways over 30 years? <laughs> maybe, maybe you've done it 10 times, but it hasn't got to the place you need it to be yet. So you just keep going. So if that man, as Prime Minister of Israel, can be that strong to come and have let the silence and the anointing and the presence of God come, when they all kind of sat there stun gunned, I mean, I have nothing against your political leadership. I pray. I pray. So maybe, Marilyn, you're going to come and pray a bit earlier for the nations. But um, there's many things to share. But we have an assignment. And we need to move in that assignment. We need to pray for each other daily and pray for Europe, pray for Israel. You know, maybe Los Angeles isn't living under threat, that it's just all kind of down there at the moment. Maybe London has a few threats, you know, but all I know is we need a few washes. I don't know anyone better than Marilyn to give us a few washes. Why don't you stand up and let's let her lead us in prayer. Amen. <laughs> 